Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we're going to continue uh, studying Judges chapter 16. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we're so grateful, Lord, for all the things you do in our lives. In spite of living in this world of sin and suffering, Lord, uh, you can give us uh, peace and comfort. We know, Lord, that you are always there helping us, and we're thankful um, that you hear our prayers, that you are teaching us. We pray that your Holy Spirit can be here this morning as we open your word together. We know there's things that we still do not understand, uh, but we ask, Lord, that you can give us wisdom and help us to understand the principles in your word, principles of Bible study. And we pray, Lord, that these can change our lives and how we interact with one another. We pray for this movement. We know the things that we are studying uh, can appear critical of others who differ. But we know, Lord, that our goal is to be united with you and so to be united with our brethren. So be with us now through thy spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, so we, we've been looking at Judges chapter 16, and um, we'll look at these. Well, I should just point out what I want to look at first. So I want to address uh, Judges 16, 1, what that, that symbolizes, and um, go over some of the things that we had talked about in previous studies. We had gone through this in like January 16th. Uh, is when we first started looking at this, which is kind of interesting because January 16th is the 16th day of the first month. And we, we say that Judges 16.1 symbolizes that. That's the wave sheaf offering. And so we looked at that um, symbol. And at the time, I, I just recently published, when we looked at this the first time, just my paper on the wave sheaf offering. So, um, so we had connected some things um, with with this symbol, and, and uh, we want to look at at Gaza um, a little bit more in detail as well, because I found some things in studying this out, and um, yeah. So then we have. Uh, well, a few other points, quite a few things here in this, the first five verses. We're going to have that 1,100 pieces of silver. Uh, so we have all these different symbols. And then laying these on the lines. Now, um, so if I go back to, well, first I'll read these verses. <clears throat> then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in and unto her. So, um uh, the word there that's translated in harlot in Hebrew, it's two different words. It means a woman of adultery. Um, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. And were quiet all the night, saying, in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sark, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means he may prevail, we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Okay, so, so that's the setting here. And uh, when we go to uh, 
these charts, this is a chart that we had done back then, uh, mid-January. Um, so this first thing, in, when you look at the top here, we have this, uh, well, we're counting from the first day of the first month in 1533 uh, to April 5th, 2030, to the first day of the first month. So it's just counting the period of time between these years on the biblical calendar, right? So to be more precise, because we could have used, of course, the Julian calendar, which drifts. Uh, we could have put this April 12th, 1533 BC date into, um, and I probably still, probably shouldn't do it that way. Consistent. Um, we could have put it into um, like the Gregorian date and then counted it. But what I prefer in situations like this, with when I'm dealing with a date on the biblical calendar, then we're looking at biblical years. Now, so it's going to be if we went from the 16th day of the first month in 1533. Um, uh, that would bring us to the 16th day of um, the first month in 2030. Now, now, technically here, I mean, we're looking at when the manna, uh, um, so this wouldn't even be, I don't know how, how to do this here. Um, so I'm just looking at, at these years. So this is going to be the year when the manna begins to fall. But the manna isn't going to begin to fall on the first day of the first month. It's going to begin to fall on the 16th day of the second month. And it's going to, they're going to actually do the first wave sheaf offering on, um, that's going to be uh, 14,588 days later, right? So I probably should have put that into the calculation, but what I wanted to do is just look from 1533 BC to April 5th, 2030. So I'm counting this span. So we need to probably put the wave sheaf offering calculation in here. I just don't have it in here. So that's one thing that we need to look at. <clears throat> but anyway, from the Exodus to this, uh, the year of the Exodus to this 2030 year is 35 162 years. Now, if you divide that by two, you get 1780, or, one, or 1781, pardon me. And you can see there, if you go from the beginning, you get 187, or 178. If you go from the end, you get 187. 178 plus 187 is 365. Now, the number of days in that period of time is 1,301,000 days, which is uh, the 212th prime number. And if we uh, take that number and put it as a Mayan date, um, just without the extra zero, you get 130100, which is uh, the 12th day of the second month in uh, the year of the Hajij Hija. Hijra, right? So that's going to be the the Islamic calendar, and that date is going to be um, December sixteenth, twenty thirteen. So whether those things are all significant, that was just an, an analysis. Now, <clears throat> um, when we were doing this back in January, we weren't placing these on a line in the sense of first angel arrives, et cetera. We were just taking these um, verses and laying them out somewhat chronological. Now, um, so Judges 16.1, what we had done, whether it was correct or not, um, and hopefully if we're in error, God can correct us here. Um, but Judges 16.1 represents the wave offering. And what I had done here in the bottom chart is the wave, wave offering. Well, that's Judges 16.1. That's the 16th day of the first month. That's when uh, the offering's first going to be waived. Now, that's not going to be in 1533. Right. 
it's going to be waived. So I'm going to put this here. Like this. So if somebody can get me the date, the, the 16th day of the first month in 1493 BC, and whatever date that is, we'll put that in there. And then I want to know um, the number of days between different things. So maybe Iran can do that, get that set up with uh, the calendar converter. So we know, um, uh, you know, we know this is going to be, well, not from the first day of the first month, but from, uh, so what I probably need to do here is put in this this way. I'm just going to copy this and put this beside it. Hope this isn't too tedious for people, but you need to see how we do these things. So you're going to have um, uh, the 16th day of the second month in 1533. That's when the man is going to begin to fall. So whatever these spans of time are, um, we can find those out. And, and then we have um, some way marks in our history. So um, I'm going to do this here just in a second. Just duplicating the slide. N now we're saying that December 25th, 2021 is also this way mark. So I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to end up putting this on the line above. Uh, I guess we already have that date there, but I want to put this here. So you can see I'm kind of, these lines are still a little bit confused in, in how we're seeing this. So we know that this then becomes Pentecost. And I'm going to put this up here. So I want to know some of these spans of time and, and we can analyze them. But um, the main thing here is that we have the symbol of the wave offer. And if we have the symbol of the wave offering and we're trying to place this into our line, into our history, um, I guess the best way to look at it is these two messages. This is Colin's presentation and, you know, 49 days later, seven weeks later, you have Pentecost. And that's now we studied Pentecost in Judges 15. So we're mixing 15 and 16 together here. Right. So one way we could look at it is Judges 15 represents Odilio's message. And Judges 16 represents Colin's message. So Colin's study, right? That's one way of looking at it. We could say that that's what's happening. But you can see when we look at these lines, these verses aren't in order. Things are mixed, mixed around. And even some of the dates that I have down here, I have November 9th, 2019 as Judges 16.4. Well, of course, that would come before these dates. So, you know, I don't have these in order. I, I put the, the verses here in order here, but then again, not in order here. So, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense to me how I drew out this chart back in, in January. But I don't think we were, we were 
you know, really worrying about that. We were just trying to put these things up here and see that one is we have this November 9th to December 25th. And so we have this part of this line. And you can see, of course, this is the same two dates, right? So we could have easily placed these over here just as we did above. So we, we still don't understand what's going on. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. We don't, we don't really know how to sort this out at, at this point. All we can do is look at the symbols. Now, um, any other symbols that uh, we should address here? Anything that people notice or questions? Okay. So I want to deal with the line of Samson and Delilah. So, so we have these dates and we have these events. And now we have Samson and Delilah. So this is chapter 16. And, and we'll refer back to these other charts that we did before and see if these make sense. So if we remember that Judges um, chapter 16, or well, actually 13 to 16, is on the line in the judges line, it's Samson, and it's this January 11th, 2023 date, right? So it's that date that's the end of Collins line. And that's how we understand this line of Samson, that it's that final way mark. It's a zoom in to the third angel arriving. Now, when we look at Samson and Delilah, this is on the line of, I got so many lines here. Um, no, it's up here. Yeah. So on the line of Samson, um, we, we said that this third angel arriving would um, apply to um, the fourth angel arriving. April 5th, 2030. It's a zoom into that way mark, possibly. Or how else could we have understood that? Because Judges 15, verse 1 to 4, is uh, that November 11, uh, November 24th date, 2022. And so this third angel arriving is, is that date that's zoomed into. So this would be Judges 15, the rest of Judges 15, which is a lot of information we're placing all at the third angel arriving. And so we need to create a line for that as well. So we're going to come back and do that in these studies. We're going to have to uh, try to put Judges 15, um, which the, the part that's a zoom into the third angel arriving, we're going to have to put that into a line. So we know we get these wheels within wheels. We get these this structure. Like it's almost like a family tree or whatever that you call those things. But, you know, where you have this first line and you have all these branches coming down. And each one of these way marks can create a new reform line. And Samson is complex. It's one of the more complex lines. Some of them were quite simple. We didn't have any trouble seeing how to draw out those lines. But with Samson, one is it's a number of chapters, um, you know, four chapters. And, um, and yet it, it uh, you know, it, it, there's so many different ways in which this line could be constructed. But it's the symbols, the symbols that guide us, right? So we've looked at these symbols and we can see how they apply in this line of Samson. So now when we're looking at this other line that we're now creating the Samson and Delilah line, um, this line is an expansion of the fourth angel arriving. Okay, so, so this is a line that's pointing forward after January 11th, 2023. So Samson and Delilah is much more in the future. But of course, this line 
is going to start back in the past and cover all that history up till the fourth angel arrives. And we have this on the other chart, but I'm just going to have this here. Right. So that fourth angel arriving way mark is April 5th, 2030. Right. So that's how we've come to understand it. And a any thoughts? Anybody got any thoughts? What's going on in your heads? You know, I know you might be half asleep. Anybody has any thoughts about this? I guess I have to assume it's all making sense. Oops. So then we would have to say that this is Samson and Delilah. Right? Does that make sense to people? that Samson's going to have these two way marks, Samson and Samson and Delilah? Or does that not make sense to people? Well, it would be a repeat and enlarge. That's what I'm looking at. So if it's the arrival of the fourth angel, then it's it's just a repeat of history. So Samson and Delilah is going to repeat all of this history from 9-11 to 2023. But it's a zoom into April 5th, 2030. And again, you know, April 5th, 2030, we don't know what it means as far as an actual date, as far as any events. But we do know that it's symbolically connected to all of our dates in our line. And, and especially when we look at... Um, an application for additional ex extension of time, um, we can see that our movement needs time, whether it needs that much time, you know, I would hope that it doesn't. I would hope that long before 2030, uh, this movement is, um, has come to the upper room and is cooperating with Christ and is accomplishing the mission that's been given to it. So, so that's why I don't know what that date means. I, I don't want to think what, what it appears to mean is that we've been given this time in, you know, to basically get ready as a movement to deliver a message. But it, it could mean different things depending upon our reaction to well, what God is, is showing us. Right. But it might not be an event at all. It could be just completely a symbolic date. And, and we can see how that would be, right? Because we've had symbolic dates within our lines that just tied us to all of these other dates. It gave us this structure. And so it very well could be what this date is. But we just don't know. It might represent, you know, some event. But we definitely won't be able to predict what that event is. So... Um, now, when we deal with Samson and Delilah, this story is going to begin when Samson goes down to Gaza. Now, we looked at Gaza yesterday, and the interesting thing about Gaza is that when I looked at the commentary, it mentioned that it's uh, 22, uh, 22 miles from, like, well, it's 22 miles north of Raphia, 
Now, of course, we know the significance of, of raffia. Uh, I think that's what it said it was. I'm just going to check the commentary. Uh, yeah, 22 miles north of the former, right? So, and when we studied this on January 16th, you know, I got um, Ascalon and Agilon mixed up. So, um, but we, you guys corrected me. So Gaza's 22 miles north of Raffia, right? And 16 miles south of Ascalon. And now, of course, we talked about the fact that, you know, how you measure miles, are you measuring it by the crow flies, by uh, the roads? And of course, those change. And right now, when it comes to... Um, uh, because the Gaza Strip is closed off to places like Ascalon that's outside of the Gaza Strip. And, and so you can't even like do a, a measure of, of the distance it would be. And um, we also know that when uh, Samson carries this gate, um, and he's going to bring it to Hebron. Hebron, of course, is uh, south of Jerusalem. And, and he's not going to be able, you know, you can't go and find out on Google Maps how far it is to drive between them because there is no driving between them. What we do know is we felt that it was an upward trek. Yes. So he went uphill quite a ways uh, to carry these gates. I mean, the only thing I can think is, the, you know, the strong man I knew um, in Warburg was uh, uh, Reinald Knopp. You know, and he carried a, a 400 pound cast iron stove uh, um, a mile on his back. So, you know, so obviously Samson's stronger than Reinhold. But, you know, just to imagine somebody carrying these gates, and this is a long, long distance. So um, uh, it's quite interesting uh, story, right? Which was why some people think it's, you know, just some sort of fairy tale or something like that but but this is this actually happened so um but there's a lot of symbolism here right so we take that this message is going to be lifted up raised up be seen by all and um and and that is the symbols and the numbers are going to be set upon the top of a hill you know a city set on a hill cannot be hid <clears throat> Um, now, the interesting thing is about Gaza, even though it's uh, the city of Gaza, um, the Battle of Raphia is also known as the Battle of Gaza. So the Battle of Raphia, which is uh, June 22nd, 217 BC, uh, we know it as the Battle of Raphia, but it's also known as the Battle of Gaza. So, so one of the things here is that we see that there's the 22 miles between them, according to the commentary. Um, but also we can understand that they are related because of the Battle of Raphia has this name, the Battle of Gaza. It's more commonly known as the Battle of Raphia, but it is known as the Battle of Gaza. Okay. So if, if we're, we're looking at all the symbols in this verse, we have uh, the wave offering symbol. And uh, I don't under, okay, Angela, so you say Gaza means strength. Now 22 divided by 220, or you're just saying 22 and 220 are symbols of reg restoration. Yeah, yeah I, I just thought we could go by the, the uh, 16 and the 22, and then I was thinking, well, double the 8, and I was thinking, a resurrection, the priesthood, you know, the 81 priests and stuff like that. So okay, Where are you getting the 22 and the 220? The 22 paralleling the 220, meaning, meaning, meaning restoration. I know, but where are you getting that from this strength? Right, because you... you 
because uh, uh, yeah, because I I I looked up the meaning of 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 Gaza or Hatha, and it means strength. Well, that's one of the meanings for it. So you're saying strength is restoration? I'm just. Not well, sure. I think it is. That's what you're saying. Okay. I mean, we're going to have the two twenty later with the thousand. Uh, 1,100 pieces of silver, so that's divided amongst five lords of the Philistines. Right. So it's going to be 220. Each of them pay, on average, if they all give the same amount. Um, it would be 220. Um, so, anyway, that's what you placed there. Now, do we have anything, uh, Iran, regarding these spans of time? With the wave offering, I uh, wasn't sure about the dates. Okay, well, if you go fifteen thirty-three BC and you go to the sixteenth uh, day of the second month, right, you will have um, that'd be May thirteen. Yeah, some yeah, that sounds right. May thirteenth. Or actually on the Julian, it's May twenty seventh. Okay, May twenty seventh. So May twenty seventh is when the manna begins to fall. And then fourteen hundred fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty-eight days later is gonna be the sixteenth day of the first month when they do the first wave offering. And then you just need to put December 25th, 2021 in there and see how many, what the span of time is. So. So just to see this visually, right, we have the number of days here the cardinal count between these two dates. Now that then um, and this date's going to be May 27th. Is it? Uh, yeah, for the 16th day of the second month is May 27th. Yeah. And then for the 16th day of the first month, that's uh, going to be... Uh, it's May 5th. May 5th. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you got... Um, that's going to be, yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> now we know this is also, you know, 494 months and 2,084 weeks. Because these are both going to be uh, the first day of the week.
Okay, so I'm just doing some calculations here. How many days is that from um, December 25th, 2021? When, uh, fr and from May 5th, 1493 BC. Uh, okay, so from May 5th, that's one, two, eight, three, three, four, four. So one, two, eight, three, three, four, four. Okay. Hmm. Well, I don't know the significance of that yet. Um, so obviously we know that's going to be um, take off 40 and So it's going to be 1732 years. No, that doesn't make sense. That's more of mine to put that wrong. So 3,513 years. which is 1171 times three years between those. So anyway, I know we're, we're just trying to look at some of these dates and see if there's any significance in this span of time. Um, now, the one date that we should uh, put in here is this Battle of Raffia. So that's June 22nd, 2017. And so, Oran, if you want to put that into your calendar converter and do some math on that and get back to us, if you find anything interesting. So, so the question is, what does the Battle of Raffia have to do with the wave sheaf offering? Right? So if we're saying that this that Gaza represents the Battle of Raffia, um, And how does this relate to our movement uh, and Samson going down to Gaza? So we got the Battle of Raphia symbol and we have the wave sheaf offering symbol. Are those two things coming together purposefully? That is, does God have a reason that we see these symbols? Now, there isn't anything irrelevant with anything in God's word. Now, I'm just trying to figure out what it is. But it does seem a little, it does seem pertinent. Well, because if we're placing this into our line, and we know that um, uh, now Raphia itself, so this doesn't 
mention raffia, it mentions Gaza. But but raffia, the gematria of raffia is 144 uh, squared. That is, um, so if you take uh, the, the gematria, that is you take the letters in the name raffia and you multiply them together, you get a number which is 20,736, which is, uh, so you have the, the square square root. So if you get, get take that square root, it's 144. So 144 to the power of two is 2736. And so we looked at that number before, but from the day that I was born to November 15th, uh, 2019, which is the 2520 day from the beginning of that 13th back tune on the Mayan calendar, um, that date's significant, right? So it, it connects with Raphia. So 817237 days from Raphia to December, uh, that's December 15th, 21. You put there, or did you mean December 25th? Yeah, okay. So we can see that that number that uh, Iran gave us, we can see um, the 273 and July 18 in there, correct? So 817 backwards, that's July 18th, and then 237 is the next four digits. Um, that's 273, just in a different order of those digits. You could also say it's uh, 1872. So that would be the 18th of July, uh, 2020, with the 18 being reversed as 81. So, so, there's, so there's symbols there in that span of time from Rafi. Now, um, So what other things that can we gather about this wave offering? So we know that we use this number of the wave offering. It's a period of time. If we go from April 6th or April 26th, pardon me, uh, I believe it's 1990. Um, and you count the number of days from that symbol, it'll bring you to... Um, April 5th, 2030. I think that's where we placed it. Yeah. That's between those two dates. So it's going from the end of April 26, 1990. And that was in this chart here. So this was the chart dealing with the November 24th, 2022 date. <clears throat> so that's where we have that additional extension of time. It ties us to this wave offering symbol. Um, and April 26, 1533 is when Israel leaves the land of Egypt. So that's a symbol there that ties to that. Um, so we had a bunch of symbols. And that's 168 days from November 9th, 168 is the number of hours in a week to April 26th, 1990. So we had created this chart, whatever it means, uh, we could just see that there was all these symbols from April 26, 1990 to June 9th, 2018 is 10,271 days, which is the 1260th prime. Um, so there's just all kinds of symbols that we created using this chart. We have the 16, uh, 29 days. Right. And we had another chart similar to this that had the 16, 29 weeks. This one doesn't have that. But um, so all we're saying is that in this story of Samson and the 
Lila. It's going to start out with these symbols that uh, we talked about as Raphia. Now, it's also going to use the symbol of Midnight, which we also tied to Raphia. Right? That is, when we have this line, first day of the first month, Midnight, Midnight Cry, Sunday Law, or whatever you want to say, 9-11, Midnight, Midnight Cry, Sunday Law, we... Um, we at times, you know, tied the symbol of midnight uh, to November 9th, right? So we so we had this line where we we're gonna have midnight was gonna be November 9th, and July 18th was gonna be Panium, and the Sunday law would be December 25th, 2021. Right? So that was one way we looked at the line at a certain time in our history. Now we can see November 9th actually represents 9-11, so we've tied that together. So if we're going to take this story of Samson and to create any line, we need a period of darkness. We need to know what the line is about, right? So we need to know why do we have this story of Samson and Delilah? What is it illustrating? Um, are we going to start this with Samson going down to Gaza? And then are we going to figure out where this symbol would lie within our history? So we can say it's November 9th, just tying the raffia symbol. But it's also connected to December 25th, 2021, because we have that wave offering symbol so i mean that would give us the beginning and the end of our 777 structure correct tied up into one verse that's what it seems as though okay i know this has been a long way around like but I think it's important that we go through this whole process of how we look at this rather than me just drawing this on a line and telling you what to think, right? Because I want you to be able to study it and consider it. But it just seems that this verse is representing that whole line of the 777 structure. So it's, it's like, the first verse of the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? You know, that is more like a title. So Judges chapter 16, verse 1 is giving us the beginning and the end with the symbols that are there. Now, this would mean, you know, if, if we understand what's happening here, uh, this, because it's a morally uh, ironic uh, symbol that Samson is, right? I mean, he's going down to see a harlot, but we can see that this represents Christ coming down to this movement. Now, we normally say the mighty angel comes down at 9-11, but we know 9-11 and 11-9 are the same symbol. And so because this is focused in on this um, This history, this history specifically relating to the repeat of history, right? Um, it's going to be starting with this structure that defines this movement at the present time, you know, or at least in, in the very recent past, right? So that whole, so this is... Maybe a better way to look at this is this is just giving us that history of what we have passed through. Because if this is a zoom into April 5th, 2030, maybe this line of Samson and Delilah, and this is what I had said back when we were studying it, is that it addresses the future much more than the past. So we've come to the end of our 777 structure. That's what this verse is showing us. But it's going to be looking into the future. So the idea here is that 
we're going to have some events that relate to this movement, right? Samson, this message carrying what we have learned and setting it upon a hill, right? That is before Hebron. Now, now notice, of course, Samson goes down to Gaza. He goes down to the Battle of Raphia, right? So Samson covers that history from, from 11.9 to December 25th, 2021. Uh, but he's going to set this, these, this city gates with the posts and the, get, the doors of the gate, which are the two leave gates, right? Um, he's going to set them on the top of the hill that is before Hebron. So why Hebron? Okay, so Hebron, Hebron means um, uh, association, right? How and, about place of joining? Right. So Angela put in here, enzyme before overlooking unity, association, fellowship, right? So this would refer to a unity that's going to exist in the movement. Right? That is, in order to, to do this, this movement has to be in unity. Is that what it's saying? Agreed. Okay. Now, um, just looking at some of these. Now, literally, it means... Uh, um, uh, uh, in the face of Hebrew, that is before the face of Hebrew, right? So panim, or panim, which isn't panim, but panim, that means face in Hebrew, right? The face. And then the word that's before is just this uh, preposition, al which means all kinds of things, above, over, upon, against. So uh, before the face of Hebron, right? So that would be, so they just put before, but it's before the face of Hebron. And, and what would be the significance of before the face of Hebron? What is that implying? Is this related at all to seeing the face of Christ? Is this anything to do with the mirror? The Maran, yes. Okay. So, so in order for us to, to give deliver this message, I mean, there needs to be an experience that we haven't yet had. And it's not some ecstatic experience. It's not something worked up, you know, some kind of religious experience in that sense. But it's something that we do experience. That is, we need to recognize our need. We need to see what manner of man we are by comparing ourselves to Christ. And we need the power of Christ in our lives to overcome. So this is, those are the first three verses. So this gives us this big picture of what this message is. It's this message related to the 777 structure. And, um, you know, Samson has come to Gaza. The Gazites know it. And, and they're going to lay in wait for him. Yeah, climbing the ladder, Peniel, yeah, Jacob's ladder, that experience, the time of Jacob's trouble. 
all those things are all tied together, right? Jacob's experience needs to be ours. And the first, he sees angels in ascending, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man, right? Upon Christ, this ladder to heaven. Okay. So just commenting on Angela's comment there in the chat. So, so they lay in wait for him all night in the gate of the city, saying, um, and, and they're going to be you know, quiet all night. So this uh, quiet is um, Karash. So, so they're concealing themselves. So it's not just about being quiet. But they're concealing themselves all the night. So Lila is night. Saying in the morning, that's going to be Boker. When it is day, Yom. No, not Yom. This is Or. When it is light, and that's the number 216, right, which is 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. Uh, that's the mark of the beast, right? So this is about the Sunday law. Can we say that? Can you can you um, go through that again, please? Okay, so this is this is like you know they're they're waiting to kill him, right? This is of course about an attack on this message, Samson. And so you're going to have this word, word night three nine one five, right, Lila? Okay. And then the word for day is not going to be yom, but it's going to be or. Right? So it's, it's, it means light. When it is light, we shall kill him. Now, the number, the Hebrew number there is 216. And 216, as a number, is 6 times 6 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. So it symbolizes here the Sunday law. And we know in Millerite history, we have the nighttime that goes from sunset on the evening of April 18th, 1844, to the 10th day of the seventh month would be morning, right? Because if midnight is July 20, uh, 21st, which is also a symbol of raffia, the midnight idea. So he's going to arise at midnight. That, again, is going to be a symbol of raphia. Um, but we know that this is about the Sunday law. Right? Because Sunday law is going to be the morning. But it also has the symbol of the Sunday law, the light, 216. Right. Yeah, is that making sense? That, that 216 uh, comes up illumination or light. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's six times six times six to get the number two one six. Interesting. So, yeah. So so even without that, we already have these symbols that would indicate the way mark, the line. Because when you go from November 9th, November 9th is 9-11. Right? It's right. a symbol of 9-11. Now, now originally we had it as being raffia, right? So so we can go from there, from Raphia, to the wave offering. And we have this, um, these symbols here, right, that already tell us, uh, they tell us what we already know. And so we see midnight. So Samson's going to lay, lay till midnight. Two one six and Judges sixteen two, yes. So um, so this is Judges sixteen two, and you can see that it's got those same digits. So <laughs> second verse of the sixteenth chapter, if you wanted to put it that way, it'd be two one six. Now another way you can look at these two verses, though, is it's. Um, the 16th day of the first month and the 16th day of the second month, right? So the mm. 16th day 
Okay, the second month is when the um, the manna begins to fall. And the 16th day of the first month is when the manna ceases to fall. So you got those there as well. Okay. Now, so we're going to have this midnight symbol in uh, Judges 16.3. And, and midnight, of course, is the center of a chiasm, right? So he's going to take the doors, the two leaved gates of the city, and the two posts. So this is going to be representing the chiastic structure, all the things that we have learned in connection with chronology. And they're going to be set upon a hill, which is before Hebron, which has to do with association. And it's going to be in the face, before the face of Hebron. Okay. So this sets up basically this whole history of this movement really from 9-11 all the way to the accomplishment of its task in these three verses. And then we have 16.4. Now, 16.4, it says it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So Sorek means a vine, and Delilah is languishing. So this is a languishing vine. So Angela is asking, where do the 40 years fit between 1533 and 1493? Um, so, this, so in 1533, on the 16th day of the second month, right? So you're talking about where do they fit in, in actual history or where do they fit in our lines? So we're saying that this is that, uh, you're saying uh, if I just wanted to know where the, where, yeah, where they fit in our lines. Well, they fit. How in does this apply line. to Georgia? So the way that I applied it is I went to, uh, I, April 26, 1990, that's a symbol, right? It's 168 days after November 9th, 1989. So it represents a week, right? Number of hours in a week, 168 days is April 26th. And if we do an exclusive count, if we counted from the end of April 26, 1990, to the beginning of April 5th, 2030, it's 14,588 days, which is the same number of days that we see here from 1533 to 1493. So I'm saying that it represents the history of our movement. That 40 years, um, you know, we, we could even just go from November 9th. So the other way that we counted it um, was from November 9th, 2019, or 1989, pardon me. So if we go from November 9th, 1989, and we count um, uh, and and we count an exclusive count. We also come to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029. So, so there's different ways that we could apply the 40 years. What they're doing, and, and if it brings us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029, it's bringing us to the beginning of that year, the civil year in which we're going to have April 5th, 2030, beginning the religious year. So, does that make sense to people? Well, my head's kind of spinning, but I'll review this and hopefully it'll, it'll become ingrained in my mind. I mean, a simple way to look at it is it's just the 40 years from 
that year in which we have the time of the end to the the year in which we have April 5th, 2030. It's 40 years, all right? And, and we can count it different ways. It's gonna give us different symbolic dates depending on where we're gonna start. Um, so, so that's how that's how we did it, um, and I think there was another way. So, yeah, I can't remember. There's other ways I applied it, but the forty years. I think there was another way in which I counted um, the months, but I, I don't remember how I did that. Um, let me see here. Because we know it's 494 months. Now, those are lunar months. Yeah, so if I count from November 9th, um, uh, 1989, and I count 494 prophetic months, it's going to bring me between the dates. So if I count from the end of November uh, 9th, 1989, it'll bring me to... Uh, the sixth day of the third month, Pentecost in 2030. So there's just different ways that we can count this, and it's going to tie us to these symbolic dates. So one way we count it, it's going to give us the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029, beginning that year. Another way we count it, we get uh, Pentecost in 2030. And the other way is just to count backwards from April 5th, 2030, and we get the symbolic date of April 26th, 1990. Okay, so, so there's different ways that we can do it. Is that helpful? Is that making sense to people? I know, you know, Angela says her head's spinning a bit, but, but we don't know where we should start it, right? I mean, there's not a... Um, a date that I can think of that we have to start it at. And different ways that we can count it. But it's 2,084 weeks, literally, or 15,488 15, days, 14,588 days. Or it is also... Um, 494 months and those could be prophetic or lunar right so we can count it different ways so if we're going to you know try to draw this on a line again and right so we're going to look at samson and delilah and we draw this on a line. So what we would do is we say we have a period of darkness. Now, that period of darkness, now we, we talked about the 40 years, but I mean, the 40 years here isn't relating to the period of darkness. It's relating to the whole span of this movement. Right? at least at how we applied it. Now we know Samson is, is he's going to judge Israel for 20 years, it says there. So if we're going to place um, this angel arriving, we need to know what uh, what this line is about 
So what is the darkness that, that we're addressing here in the story of Samson and Delilah in this line? What is it about this movement that needs to be addressed? What is the darkness? And how do those symbols relate to a message that arrives? And how is that message going to affect us? Does the, the message come from within or from without? Okay. Um, I don't know. What is the message? Well, if we're examining this in the light of what we've seen from the book of Ezekiel and from Revelation, we know that the message first has to go to the house of God, right? Yes. So this is about a message to this movement. Okay. And, th and that message has to begin, I would think, um, in connection somewhere with the 777 structure. Okay. I don't know if we're going to say that it happens at the end of the 777 stru structure. I mean, we could just say the first angel arrives December 25th, 2021. That would be a message that arrived there, right? Because it's going to give us this, this span of the 777 days. But I think because this is a repeat of history, that the line of Samson and Delilah doesn't begin at November 9th. It's giving us all of these symbols about that history because it's bringing us to this history after December 25th. 2021. So the way marks that would be related here would relate to whatever that darkness was that we that we were in prior to December 25th, 2021. So from what we've seen and how we laid out Samson before, I would say that the first angel arrives would be December 25th, 2021. And the formalization would be February 12th, 2022. That's the way that I'm looking at it. And then we'd have to figure out what the empowerment of that was. And, and see, because this is future dates, that's the way I look at Samson and Delilah. But other than, you know, these dates at the beginning, this is mostly a line about the future. And it's relating to April 5th, 2030. So it's a difficult line, which is why we really didn't finish it before, because I knew it was referring to the future. But where we were at, at that time in January this year, you know, I don't know if we were ready to really look at the line then. And I, I'm not sure even if we're ready to look at it now, other than we need to at least understand something about its structure. But I think it's predicting the future for this movement. And does that make sense, Dwight? I think it's adding to what we need to be considering. Yeah. So, so if we put this date here as... Let me see grab this you know if we put this date here as december 25th you know and then we just put here colin and then we would have to put um Dilia's study here. So there's this increase of knowledge that's occurring in connection with these two messages, right? So we put it. 
different. So we got a dealio there. So we got these two presentations, an arrival of a message and a formalization of a message. Now, we, we've had these, these in lines before, right? So when we had them in the other lines, they were more at the end of our lines. Here, we're just placing it at the beginning of our lines. So the Samson and Delilah line has um, these, you know, these two messages to start it. Now, we could you know, just say both of them are at the arrival of the message. So we could put both of them together, maybe, and see something else as a formalization. But also, normally, when we, we take this... Uh, this message here. So when we're going to look at this, this darkness here, so this darkness is going to be um, chapter 16, verse 1 to um, well, we'll just say 16, verse 1, because that's going to lay out um, that structure right so this is the 777 structure so we're going to call that a period of darkness okay <clears throat> so at the end of that 777 structure you're going to have this light that's that comes now there isn't just colin's message there we also have stephen right so we have 457 to 321, which equals 777, right? So we're going to have, oops, didn't want that bold. Okay, so that understanding is important because it's, it's actually interpreting that event, December 25th, 2021. It's marking the Sunday Law in 321. And it's showing that the December 25th, 2021 symbol that we had attached, or the symbol that we had attached to that date was the Sunday Law symbol. Right? So, so Stephen's insight that came to us on that date was extremely important. Colin's presentation was important. Now, so in a sense, you have that doubling where the first angel arrives. Right? You have Colin and Stephen. They're presenting these messages. Now, Adilio's message, how is it a formalization of Colin's? His study on the mandates, why is that a formalization of Colin's? Because Colin's primarily addressing Trump. Adilio's mostly addressing the the seven 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 structure and July eighteenth and the symbols attached to that. Did, did, didn't we look at the presentations themselves and noticed uh, the the two loaves on one, mm -hmm. and on the other one, um, it had another symbol that related. I can't remember. Is that what you're talking about there? Yeah. So well, first off, Collins is. The, the wave offering. Right. Adelio's is Pentecost. There's 49 days between the two. Right. So, so we looked at that symbol already. And so we've tied these two together. And so that 49 days or seven weeks. Right. We put that there. That becomes the symbol that ties these two together. And, and we also know that Adilio study, the symbol that primarily comes here is, well, I shouldn't say primarily, it's, it's almost secondarily, but it's this 1629 symbol, right? So Adilio gives us a new symbolic number that can be connected to other numbers that we have. So these two messages go together. So we can see how one's an arrival and one's a formalization. But then we need an empowerment. 
Now, as far as the, um, the verses that we're going to attach here. So we have 16 verse 1. That's going to be attached to this period of darkness. <clears throat> it gives us the end of the 777 structure. gives us that whole structure. Stephen, at the end of the 77 structure, understands from 457 BC to 321 AD is 777 years, something we should have noticed before, but we did not. Right? So I thought that was pretty interesting at the time. And then we had Collins' presentation. The Collins' presentation marks basically 16.1 um, as well. Right? So 16.1 is bringing us to 16.1. But it's also referring back to Raphia, the Battle of Gaza. So Jeremiah 32, 1 is the 777th chapter uh, in the Bible, right? Uh, Ran is telling us that. So 3, 2, 1, right? We can see the 321. It brings us to the 777th chapter in the Bible, and we can see 321 AD is the 777 years from 457. So it's just another witness that we're going to have this at the end of these 777 years, which Stephen gives us, is the end of 777 days. He, he notices this at the end of these 777 days, that it's 777 years. And we have 777 verses to Jeremiah 3.21, 32 verse 1. Right? So, I mean, we're getting close to running out of time here, but um, so then we have the harvest, right? So you're going to have the, the barley harvest and the wheat harvest, and those are going to be completed. Uh, the wheat harvest, I guess, is connected to um, Pentecost, so that's going to be Pentecost, and we get this symbol of 1629. That's the formalization of the message. Now, we need an empowerment of that message. Now, I would say it has to be something that ties all of these together. So, um, with the 777 thing that just Aram said, the 777th chapter, um, I remember... Uh, last week, I think it was, we were discussing another chapter. I think it was Jetham. And um, one of the chapters was 777th chapter uh, from the end of the Bible. Could that possibly be a tie? From the end of the Bible, it goes to, is it, um, it goes to uh, Ezra. And nine, where the we find the twentieth day of the ninth month. We we were we were discussing something, and it came up that it was the seven hundred and seventy seventh chapter to the end yeah. of the Bible. So that's Ezra chapter nine, or chapter ten, right? Where it talks about the twentieth um, day of the ninth month. Is that what you're saying, Iran? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, so again, the 20th day of the ninth month is December 25th, 2021. And so if you go... And so there's another tie right there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we can definitely just tie December 25th to the 777 structure. And But we're also tying it here to the wave offering. And then we're tying a dilio study to the wheat harvest. Pentecost. So, and then we, so that's the formalization of a message. Now, we have the first angel being empowered, and, and we've dealt with this in different lines, right? So we've, we've addressed, um, like in, in these different chapters of the judges, we've addressed these waymarks, 
but they would be at the end of these lines, where here we're putting them at the beginning of these lines. Because that's what we, we believe that uh, Judges chapter 16 is going to start at the end of the 777 structure. And so that means these dates that we're looking at, I mean, they may include dates that we've, we've more dates that we've passed, but they're definitely looking into the future. Yeah, it's, the, it's what it's beginning to appear. Yeah. And so it's going to take a little bit, but you can see as we work through this, you can start to see how these things make sense based on what we've done in the past. We couldn't have just a year ago looked at Samson and Delilah and, and drawn them out on a line. We didn't have the information we have today. Yeah. And, and we, and we wouldn't know how to construct this line. So when we look at the darkness here, what is the, the specific darkness that's being addressed in, in that period of 777 days? So there's a darkness that's there. And I don't think it's an easy thing really to just say it's this or that. We have to show that it's this or that. But what we have seen that internally is that this movement lacks understanding. Right. So... And if we're saying that there was an increase of knowledge, we would look at that period of time from December 25th, 2021. And that increase of knowledge continues, but what is it that's been increasing in knowledge um, since call and study? And one is it's been the understanding of the lines. So we know prior to December 25th, 2021, that there's something we didn't understand about the lines which is why Colin could make his prediction regarding Trump. That is because he's in darkness. Now God gives him this message though, right? So the one thing we always have to remember is this message is given um, as, as a message to, in, to help this movement. Colin's study was not, you know, some error that Colin was making that needs to be corrected. It is something, I believe, from God, but it contains in it things that are not going to be understood until we go through either this whole line or at least up until the second angel arrives. And my argument would be that this whole first message is about understanding the message of Colin, Stephen, and Odilio. So that when we get to the second angel arriving, going to be um, so when we get here, that's going to be a message that people have to receive in order to be benefited by this second message. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah, and so this movement is, and and I would think that that this understanding of the lines is this present study. Um, and particularly the study of the, of the book of Judges, that once we accomplish the understanding of this, then another message can arrive to this movement. And it's going to be illustrated in the story of Samson and Delilah. So, in understanding Samson and Delilah, understanding that message, I mean, we can say, well, that second angel, when does it arrive? I mean, I mean, I would think that that's still future because we don't understand this yet. But as we come to understand it, then that second angel arrives. So I don't think with this line we can just say, well, the second angel arrives and we can say it's going to be on such and such a date. I mean, we might imagine that we have a date. And then it's going to be formalized on such and such a date and empowered. Well, those would be events that have not yet occurred.
Now we might be able to say what events they are based upon what we read in Samson and Delilah. We just won't know when. Does that seem fair enough? Logical. Okay. Well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning and um, for the clarity that you continue to give us. I pray that you can watch over each person. May your angels uh, take care of us and help us as we face the struggles of this week. Um, Thank you for the, the blessings of the past week and, and of yesterday. Um, we are thankful for the prayers uh, that we receive and um, for your angels' care and the way your Holy Spirit works upon us. Continue to work in our lives. Allow us to um, give us the strength so that we can allow you to work in our lives. Be with each person now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.